really proud of. Um, next, we move on. We move on. We have this interesting and weird um, thing that's going on now in hip hop that I don't necessarily makes any sense. And it's quite a black thing as well, isn't it? Really? <laughs> yeah, let's be honest. But it's very, very bizarre. There's this. Um, and I don't know when it started. There seems to be an obsession with female rap stars with Birkin bags, right? Um, legendary handbag that's been, you know, essentially a main staple in the fashion industry for, I don't know, many, many decades. And somehow it's kind of got a resurgence in life, maybe because of the value it sort of holds, um, you know, both uh, figuratively and literally. But it seems like um, it's become the currency of equating whether or not you are with a do nothing N word or whether or not you're with a baller N word. And for some reason, you've got all these really successful, uh, talented hip hop artists, especially female artists who are weirdly or not kind of poor shaming their own, you know, fellow sisters in the scene, which is really goes against this whole like protect black women, women need to work together thing. Because, you know, if you're in the fight, if you're in the five percent of people who are able to carve out a successful music career, let alone in a particular genre, you're definitely one of the privileged few. So then to go out on your social media and sort of like, you know, talk down upon others who haven't necessarily attained that wealth uh, via the proxy of a handbag that you have never, that you didn't create, that you just kind of bought yourself and you are ascribing all this value to it is super, super odd. And it kind of really makes you question where it kind of makes you question like, everything that you're seeing with some of these public relationships, like are they actually relationships or are they just convenient business partnerships um, that benefit both parties in terms of building their brand, especially in the era of COVID. I don't think there's, it, 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 to me, it doesn't seem that there's any coincidence. It's no coincidence to me, because I don't believe in coincidences, that this whole Birking revival it, within the hip hop scene has come about during COVID when everyone's locked in at home and has nothing to do. And the only thing that you can do if you're a successful music star is get dressed up in your own home and sort of show off your interior, whether it's a walk-in wardrobe, a really expensive swimming pool, massive basketball court, extensive car collection, showing off your trappings of your wealth is the only thing that you can do if you don't have any other thing to provide your audience with in terms of music. Because of course, most musicians don't get paid off streams. So they feel as if if they make music, they sort of basically you know uh flushing money down the toilet because the only way you kind of get paid off music is having the ability to perform live so maybe this is their kind of perverse way of trying to make sure they keep their audience engaged but regardless it's really really odd i'm not really a fan of it and this is another example this is from dj academics page this is um supposedly uh quavo off of quavo's instagram um live his girlfriend, Sweetie, decided to go on and basically give some advice to women regarding their relationship with men. So let's hear what she has to say. Working, if you're not paying for your bills, then send that nigga back to the streets, okay? Okay, if you're not getting you a Birkin, if you're not paying for your bills, then send that nigga back to the streets, okay? So if you didn't hear that through the really loud music playing in the back which is you know it's always a it's always the perfect they always make for the perfect instagram video live videos right really loud music playing in the background a camera that's probably sat on the desk somewhere so you can't necessarily the microphone can't pick up the voice of somebody and just really muffled noise perfect perfect instagram video instagram live especially um so sweetie said basically if your guy isn't paying your bills or buying you birkin bags throw that man back on the streets you know get rid of him which is insane, isn't it? Like, again, it's, it's, there's so many contradictory messages that come out of you nowadays living in the modern world, especially if you're a single guy trying to navigate these single streets. On one hand, you have these females telling you that they're independent women and they don't need no man's help. But in the moment you attain some sort of wealth and then you decide to go on your separate ways because you had enough or because you want to go and explore other pastures new, they then demand to have a portion of this money that you attained yourself, right? Sometimes you might have attained it as a team or they have this really perverse thing of wanting um, you know, you to maintain their standard of living, which is utterly bizarre. I've never understood that kind of way of thinking. On one hand, you want to be independent, but in the moment I decide to leave you, you also want some. You also want to put your hand in my pocket. Cool, whatever. Let's just, let's agree, disagree on that one. Then you kind of go into what she's talking about, where essentially, if the man isn't providing monetarily for the woman, um, that relationship isn't worth anything, which is odd, isn't it? You would assume 
relationships between men and women are more about um, ability to provide outside of material goods. It's essentially the ability to provide a safe and stable home, the ability to provide a loving relationship, the ability to provide for the, your kids, the ability to be a rock to, to somebody to lean on in general, right? That's what you would put, you'd think of. And of course, if that person also has the benefit of providing monetarily in terms of uh, financial security, that's amazing. But to have the prerequisite entry to like, hey, if you want to deal with me, if you want to get in between these legs, if you want to have spent time with me, you have to buy me a bag and pay my bills. It really lowers the value of said woman. It really kind of devalues them. And it's more so with Sweetie, who everyone seems to really have a love affair with because she comes across, I guess, fairly decent. They all seem like bird brains, innit? Hip hop girls. They all seem like absolute bird brains. Like, if you have enough money and if you have enough clout, it seems like, again, this is what it's appearing like for a guy like me from the outside. It appears like if you have any enough money, enough clout, you can get with most of these girls, especially if they're single, right? You have a chance. If you have a bit of... And, and this is the thing that makes me even more confused because especially the guys who are like terrible at, you know, dealing with some of these hip-hop honeys or some of these um, Insta baddies or Instagram models, it doesn't looks like it takes that much work in the US or in general in most you know um, uh, in most of these sort of like niche genres, right? I'd guess I, I think it, it. I think it's not really to even to say it's a hip hop thing, but let's imagine it's a hip hop thing. Even in the UK, I guess the same thing with the UK rap scene. It looks like as long as you've got decent amount of game and you're not a complete dickhead and you've got some money on your pockets and you've got a bit of clout in terms of you know you've got a good social media following. Maybe you got some good, you know, you're you're kind of killing in your own little lane. You can get with most people, most of these girls out here. If if what she's saying is true, if it's just about paying bills and making sure they got Birkins, if you can, if you turn out to be a fairly decent dude, on top of that, they've basically won the lottery, isn't it? Because all they wanted from me was a Birkin, and the bills paid anyway. So, and also, and of course, and the guys. Um, arm and the guy side of it you've what you've obviously had the ability now and you've obviously got the privilege of having someone that looks like sweetie on your arm as well right so there's kind of a mutual benefit uh, mutually beneficial relationship there it's just annoying when you see women coming out saying oh man i want to be independent and do my own thing and then they, they're you know essentially co-signing such idiotic messages like this like it's so weird it really is weird it kind of um if anything not even to be crass it sort of like veers into the um, arena of prostitution in it because essentially prostitution means you know it's the exchange of money for sexual uh, favors right or for sexual um a, a sexual experience um and that's essentially what it is of course i'd assume most prostitutes if they if they come across a fairly decent guy who's not a dickhead and doesn't treat them absolute shit and he's a pretty decent customer it makes their job that much easier to do in it it's like oh it's actually a great experience this um but of course the most the fundamental reason why that person's in your room in the first place is because you're paying them not because they're in love or anything and this similar sort of thing is happening with this sort of bergen um bill payment obsession it's like is there any love to this or is it just m mostly a monetary exchange and if it is it's no different from prostitution really isn't it i, I think so anyway i don't think it's any any different and again what sort of message is to send to girls it's really odd it's like on one hand everyone's complaining about to tory lane supposedly shooting uh, megan which is looking like a complete fabrication but then you're allowing women, not allowing, but women like this are basically being basically being pushed to the forefront as being some sort of positive inspiration to young women coming up. It's like, no, it's not. No, she isn't. That that's no way to value yourself and value your relationship and value what you have to what you have to offer to it as well by telling people, hey, if you are able to pay my bills and buy me bags, I'll sleep with you. That's insane. Like it's absolutely legitimately insane. But Again, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, but I think it's really, really odd. I guess for Hermes, it's a good thing, isn't it? Because, you know, people are buying Birkins again. Well, they're, they're always buying Birkins, but, you know, there's a new there's a new kind of cultural currency when it comes to Birkins, so that's probably good for business. But overall, it's such a bizarre and really, um, to you know, I won't say tone deaf in the time that we're in at the moment, because I don't think so. I just think, you know, celebrities are bored and they don't have anything else to do than just, you know, show off their material goods if they have nothing else to offer. But it's just such a... It, it, it definitely does go against what, you know, the current climate of things are at the moment, right? The women movement's come really, really far in the last few years. There's been a lot of, like, legitimate causes to get behind 
that have really brought about some interesting conversations that you know essentially have provided some long-term change that you probably won't see now right um, but i'm sure the generations that come after us will definitely benefit from and then you have messages like this it's like come on man you're devaluing the thing in it but again what do i know <laughs>